Uh, looking back through the Bush years, which most people would agree were not the best of times, a lot of Republican leaders have said that things went the way they did because Republicans abandoned conservative principles. Um, but there hasn't been a whole lot of discussion about whether those principles are still completely valid. I mean, things like cutting taxes, reducing mm -hmm. regulation, you know, encouraging growth. Are those principles all the country needs to get back on top? Or should there be more of a discussion about, you know, whether the party of Reagan should adapt to serve the American people? Well, there is an excellent piece kind of dealing with that on Front Porch Republic recently, where the author talked about how traditionally the United States has seen itself as pursuing both prosperity and equality. And historically, that sounds like something very much in line with kind of a Reaganite approach. You allow the businesses to prosper, and it trickles down, and everybody benefits. Um, with a post-industrial society, though, I don't think that works. And so what the author of um, this piece at Front Porch argued is he said, we're coming to a point where we're going to have to pick which of these we value more. We're going to have to say we're going to pursue prosperity no matter what, full speed ahead, whatever we have to do, and understand that if that happens and we'll see the, the gap between the rich and the poor increase even more. And I think that's actually, if you look at Reagan's years, when he was using those policies, the gap did increase between the wealthiest citizens and the poorest. Um, or the other option would be that we choose to pursue um, equality amongst um, our citizens, understanding that we're going to be outpaced by the Chinas and the Indias of the world that are moving toward more of a, just, especially China, prosperity at any cost kind of scenario. Um, in either case, I think the vision Americans kind of have of themselves is going to have to change. Because if we choose prosperity, which I think we probably will, unfortunately, um, we're going to have to give up these illusions of the American dream and of America as this land of opportunity and understand that it's really just a land for people to make, for a few people to make money and the rest of us do the best we can. Um, but if we pursue this vision of equality, which I think would be much healthier, not necessarily like a socialist approach to equality, because I think there's problems with that, but just um, as a cultural value, um, some form of justice, equity, um, we're going to have to accept the fact that our days as the economic head honcho are numbered. I mean, we're always going to be a major player because we have thousands of nukes. So everybody's always going to be concerned with what America's doing for that reason, because we can blow up the planet 17 times over. But um, if we really care about justice and equality, we're going to have to curb back some of our um, more uh, um, ambitious financial aspirations, I think, because we are getting to a point where it, I mean, looking back at Reagan all the way up to now, it seems like a lot of the times when a big business does well, the CEO benefits, the board of directors benefit, and the common workers get their jobs outsourced. I think you might take issue with some of that. <laughs> so, yeah, no, so, so, <laughs> so, now, I think that Jake brings up a concern a lot of people have, which is that, you know, these more or less laissez-faire policies, the less taxes, less regulation, smaller government, that even though that might, you know, make some people wealthy, that it's not, people are becoming more unequal under those policies. So do you think that the conservative principles of Ronald Reagan and other conservative leaders, whether those can still deliver equality and prosperity? Absolutely. Um, I believe in um, liberty and justice and, you know, I, I'm not saying you don't, but um, <laughs> just that the American dream is to be able to find a job, make some money, start your own business if you want without fear of having it r taken away or taxed to an impossible measure. Um, you know, Sam Walton opened his own little, you know, hut selling, you know, home and convenience store type goods and now it's Walmart. I mean, you know, that kind of thing, you can't do it anymore because of the, the large aspect that government has in our everyday lives. And um, I think that really if, if we have smaller government, it, it makes people freer to make their own decisions, decide what they want to do with their time, um, how they want to spend their money, not how the government wants to spend their money. Yes, we do need a government. Yes, we need, we need roads, we need public services, we need public works, that kind of thing. But um, 
I don't want government to control my health care. I don't want them to um, eventually, you know, necessarily take over the sector of car insurance, home insurance, flood insurance, which I guess they have already done flood insurance. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, every aspect of our lives, I, I think it's, it's healthier and um, better for the individual to have those certain liberties with their own economical freedom and then everything else that falls into that, social freedoms as well. Um, and I think a lot of the problems that people have today, um, you know, with the American dream is really just inhibited by the big government.